Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Alan Pogrzelski with OpenPrize. For those of you who don't know who OpenPrize is, we automate all those really painful manual processes that your sales automation and marketing automation solutions don't. Things like cleaning up your data and removing duplicates, things like helping you find the right customers, uh, things like helping you make, automate all those business processes that are really taking up all of your time. And we do it all from one platform. Uh, today, I'm really pleased to announce our speaker today. There, there we go. Uh, uh, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, Ali Rastieo, she is part of a new breed of marketer who are really pushing the envelope in terms of what data can do and what business processes can be automated. Uh, she is a director of marketing operations at Big Commerce, and she is also a master of Cajun and Creole cuisine. And for those of you who don't understand how those two are connected, she's going to explain. So uh, please welcome Ali Rustinejo. Hi. Wow, they're so far back. Um, yes, my name is Ali. I have been doing some form of marketing or sales or advertising since the 1990s. I like to think of myself as a fine wine that just continues to get better with age, but I'm not old or seasoned like a chicken. Um, I am master of Cajun and Creole cuisine. Uh, I, am a, my, I grew up in Louisiana. Food is at the heart of everything we do, and we, are, um, we own crawfish farms. So that should give you a little insight into some of this. Um, Big Commerce is the leading SaaS platform for e-commerce businesses. Uh, businesses that are growing rapidly. Um, it's very scalable, lots of API integrations, and do a lot of customizations on it. Um, really, the future of commerce is gonna go to SaaS and not be on-premise because you need to be able to grow and scale quickly. And that's what we do. What is data orchestration? I think that that's a big question. I know that was a big question for me when we were um, looking for a solution to solve some of our data problems that we were having. I kept hearing this word data orchestration. And I was like, is that just like another thing that someone's making up for marketing to, marketers to go buy technology? Or is that like, you know, a real thing that they're doing now? And it turns out it's an actual thing. Um, what it does is automate the data processes so that your data is teed up for action. And as a marketer, that is super important to me. That is the number one thing that's gonna make me scalable and make me be able to go to market as quickly as possible and put as many programs out there as I need to to hit those numbers that we are all beholden to. So let's talk recipes. We're gonna talk about my award-winning Cajun crawfish cornbread. It is award-winning not because I have won any awards with it, but my friends did. I had a friend that um, was doing a chili and cornbread cook-off for her uh, daycare, if that's not the most Texas thing you've ever heard. Um, and she actually used this recipe to enter and won a free month of daycare, which is a pretty substantial prize. So why are we talking recipes? Well, recipes have ingredients. They have to get made, you know, th those are the things that go into the recipe to get your end result of this delicious concoction you're attempting to make. For this particular recipe, it calls for crawfish. It calls for eggs. It calls for oil, cream corn, pickled jalapenos, not fresh, because you'll burn your mouth, uh, some cheddar cheese, Next, salt, cornmeal, onions, and baking soda. All of these are very important. Now imagine if I had to go out and catch the crawfish myself, which is hilarious because my idea of going outside is sitting on a patio and having a cocktail. It is not trying to go catch crawfish in a swamp. Um, but what if I had to do that? What if I had to raise chickens for my eggs, you know, and, and have them producing in my backyard? What if I had to make oil? I don't even know what that, I don't have any clue how I would do that. Or cream corn, which actually I did have to do the other day when I made this recipe that I am known for because I was out of it. Um, I don't know how to pickle a jalapeno. Like, I don't know how to make any of this stuff. Baking soda, that's 
you know, some science involved. I don't know what that is. So what if I had to do all that before I could actually make this delicious dish that everyone asked me to make on a regular basis? It would take me forever. It's just not something that's scalable or doable. You have to be able to buy your ingredients ready to go. So I get my, cor my crawfish already boiled, already peeled in a nice little package of one pound. That is exactly what the recipe calls for. I get my cheese already shredded. I even get my onions already chopped because I'm too lazy to do that. It takes me 10 minutes to throw it all together and then I can sit back and have a cocktail for the 45 minutes that it takes to bake. So how does that tie into this? Well, that's what data orchestration is. It's setting up that data so that you're not running human processes to do all of the things that you need to do to make sure that it is ready and, uh, for you and for your marketing and your sales programs. So one of the problems that we had that I was challenged with was segmentation. We wanted to run some campaigns for Magento, or trying to target Magento customers. We we're also doing a B2B campaign. Companies that um, sell B2B, but aren't maybe selling like online. So we had these lists of, of these companies. We knew what companies were on these platforms or sold that way. Um, we had their domains, but I was challenged with when one of the people from those companies enters the database, raises their hand in some way, that we flag it in the database that it is a Magento co company or a B2B company. And I was racking my brain like, well, how would I do that in Marketo? I mean, I'm a 10-year veteran of Marketo. I was one of their first 500 customers. And I was like, that would just, I could run smart lists upon smart lists and add you know, a lot of data into my system that is unnecessary in order to try to do that in some way. And it would still be fuzzy matching and not really accurate. And it would just tax down my Marketo instance like crazy. So. That's when we discovered data orchestration. Um, and we actually discovered OpenPrize because Outbounding Works, I had a sales guy just send me an email and was like, hey, are you interested in this? And I was like, huh, that might be the solution to our problem. I don't know. Um, but we, we ended up with OpenPrize. We looked at a couple of other vendors as well. Um, but the answer, they, you can just run these incredibly easy programs to do some basic standardization that will help you in you know, miles. Like it saves you thousands of dollars of like a data technician doing it. So the process we created to solve this particular problem with Magento and the B2B. We had a list of a target accounts. We already had the domains ripped away from them so that we knew that this company had this domain. Um, we put the lists, or we put an operation in OpenPrize that would extract the domain uh, from the email address with every lead record that comes in and deposits them in their own fields. Then OpenPrize matches to that list of domains that we have and says, oh, this person in this record, she's on that B2B list. We're going to check off this B2B checkbox. Oh, this person's on the Magento list. We're going to check off B2B, I'm sorry, Magento. Oh wait, this person's on both those lists. We're gonna check off both those boxes. It does all of that for us. And then as soon as that lead is cleaned and goes through all the processes, we can drop them in the right messaging tracks. We can offer them the right email addresses, program, or emails, programs, whatever it is that we're um, gonna do to them on the next step. What, that ha what the result of that was that we have dedicated nurture and ABM plays for each campaign. Uh, we had 27% faster MQ, uh, lead to MQL conversion, and we saw a 15% lift in revenue right away. It was just, we got to so the right person, the right message so fast, it made that selling process so much easier. We also introduced the standard clean. This happens to every lead that comes into the database. We don't have, uh, no matter how they enter their information, whether they're screaming at us with all capitals, or not, we camel case it. Um, the phone numbers, super important for our SDRs because they have auto dialers. So we need that standardized in a way that the auto dialer can work properly. State and country codes, 
me as a marketer, selfish, I'm always thinking about me as a marketer, not the salesperson. Um, but I want to be able to run programs on my records and say everybody in Texas and know that I'm grabbing everybody in Texas because I'm only looking for the TX. Um, correctly misspelling email domains. A company like BigCommerce that has a lot of what we call dreamers coming into our business, um, wanting to start an online store, we get a lot of Gmail addresses or Hotmail or whatever nonsense email address somebody uses that's private. Um, but there's a lot of common ones and they get misspelled very easily. So OpenPrize already has in the system what those should be and will transform them into the right um, context so that you're not missing out to marketing to that person. And then my favorite, the Mickey Mouse. Um, that's the bogus email addresses. The one you go in and you're just like, I am Ted Kennedy, blah, blah, blah. And you make up names. It's a lot of curse words is what we get. Um, but it will block those. Or, and the way that we handle that is we just put them on a, a, a marketing suspend list. The next thing that we did that was super important was ripping, um, taking a job title and discerning what the job function and the job level is so that we know that we're talking to the right person that's the decision maker about whatever it is that we're trying to do. So we already know they're Magento, but we want to talk to the decision maker. Or maybe we do want to talk to an influencer. We have different messaging for them. So this is really important. And the way that it worked is, I mean, if you see this with your eyeballs, you know that Assistant to the VP of demand generation is likely not a decision maker. They may be a uh, influencer. Maybe they can get some attention to what you're trying to do, but they are not the decision maker. So what OpenPrize does is it takes that demand generation and it marks it as job function marketing, sub job function lead generation. That's pretty smart. But the next thing it does is that it prioritizes the first part of it. It sees assistant there and knows that that's priority to the VP. So it already knows that it's an individual contributor and will market that way. Any other system that isn't this smart would just assume that's a VP of marketing because you would be doing some sort of um, just fuzzy matching logic type thing. So it would see the VP of demand and like pull that in. So one thing that Alan did, and one thing that this is a really great tool for is your event lists and understanding um, the quick segmentation of who is at an event that you visited, which you're all here as part of a, um, a learning process, but you're also do, you're marketers, right? So you're doing the same things. You're going to events as well. So this is what the makeup of the, this conference looks like for Open Prize and who they're going to be targeting and how they're targeting them. They threw this into the system. Within two minutes, they could see um, what companies were really prevalent here um, and the job functions of the folks here. So then they could easily put them into the right um, talk tracks, marketing tracks, et cetera. OpenPrize also helped us with our GDPR compliance work. We were a little behind, which I'm sure some of you guys may have also been. Um, but we were a little behind when we were starting to really work on uh, getting compliant for GDPR. And what it did was they already had it plugged into the system what the countries were that were affected by GDPR regulations. We ran it against the database and we carved out three lists known for, we know that these are GDPR compliant countries or records. One was unknown, we weren't sure because we didn't have either uh, any, any sort of fuzzy logic matching that we could do or um, any sort of country information on them. And then the ones that were US that were like, well, this is just US, we can still just spam them, it's fine. Um, and once we had those lists broken down, we put them on uh, marketing suspend lists and ran um, opt-in campaigns to them and slowly started building up, back up that list that we can market to them um, and then carved off the ones that never responded. And what this is, and, and to me, what the most important thing that this type of work does is it puts marketing ops in the, the driver's seat of strategic um, 
or, or the strategic table, and they're not just what I refer to as JIRA monkeys, right? Just accepting requests come in from the demand team or um, any of the marketing teams, the digital team to just go and do things. They are now in control of how the data is sorted and the data strategy that's being used in campaigns. And they are brought, at least my team is, brought to the table in the beginning before anything is launched, whether it's a new product, it's a campaign, whatever we're working towards, my team is brought to the table in the strategy part so that they know, A, what to deliver them to them to execute right, and also so that they have a say in how things are getting executed. Super important so that, one, they just feel great in their jobs, but two, it puts them in this strategic role that sometimes they aren't viewed as. And our future roadmap for August, um, one of the things that we struggle with at BigCommerce is that it's uh, a transitioning company. It served small businesses for a really long time and we're looking to move up market. So that means that we have to transition all of our legacy uh, processes that were more transactional based to a, a, a longer sales cycle. Um, that includes an account refactor because at one point, whenever somebody would sign up for a trial, they would automatically create an account, which sounds smart, except we have like eight million dreamers that are just, you know, creating accounts or kicking the tires or, you know, it's, a, it's not real companies as of yet. Um, there's also, there was no compliance around how sales was doing some of their work. So they would get assigned a, 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 something from Nike, let's just say Nike, and they would go in and be like, well, what account do I even work on this? Because there's like 15 of them. I'm just gonna go make my own special account. So they would just continue to dirty it. So we had a lot of very dirty account data. So right now they're going through a refactor of one, how accounts are being created um, in an automated fashion, and two, the processes around sales and how they create accounts. Once that work is done, which should be this month, um, we can really start doing, setting ourselves up for true ABM in a way that we weren't able to do before. Um, so in September, we're gonna add the ABM functionality from Marketo. We didn't have that before, so that you can actually um, talk to a full account of people versus just a one-to-one -one relationship, which is what Marketo is initially built on. Um, we're gonna be using OpenPrize in that process to help do the lead to account matching when leads enter the system so that we get that rolled up view, whether it's brought in from an event, a salesperson puts it in because they are building their, um, their list, or it came in organically with a hand raise. Um, and then in November, we're gonna add something like a Mintigo to make sure that we are identifying our um, ideal customer profile and matching those um, and getting the lookalikes and knowing when they're in a buying cycle so we have the right person getting talked to at the right time, for sure. And that's sort of what the future looks like for us. That's it. Anybody got questions? Y'all wanna know the recipe for cor crawfish cornbread? <laughs> no? It's really good. All right. Thank you so much. Give a round of applause. Thank you.